tonight we're having dinner at one of the hottest new restaurants in Oslo. We are at the Tea Room. This is a fine dining restaurant from Chef Luke Henderson. He used to work at Mimo and now he's opening his own spot. He's bringing in his British heritage, combining it with his fine dining training. The restaurant is super intimate. It only has five tables, so it's really personal. There's only a few chefs and a few people working in the front of house. They also have a wine bar attached to the restaurant called the Imperial, where they're serving more casual British comfort food like hash browns, beef tartare on waffles, and scotch eggs. My name is Luke Henderson and I'm the chef here at the Tea Room. I'm from Shropshire, which uh, even like in England, nowhere, no one really knows uh, where that is. I work for Tom Kerridge, the Hand of Flowers. And then my next like uh, larger one was at Mima with Jordan and Esben. I definitely feel like when I like, look at it after, it's like definitely a marriage between them two. So at the very start we have a, a broth of uh, tomatoes from uh, South Norway and then we've just seasoned it with uh, elderflower vinegar and also the oil. And so we've just taken all of the skin which we've dried and now we've treated it as a, a chicharron. Just on top of that we have the roe as well. Just preserve this by smoking and then finally now you have pickled leek as well. I really wanted it to be an Oslo. The produce is amazing and uh, I really love the, the Norwegian kind of tastes and flavours but then I also really love like the technique that I learnt from the UK as well because I do think that they're quite different. I want another one. Yeah, we have five tables and we're a very small team of just uh, three uh, cooks and then two in the front as well. So it's, it's really quite personal I think. At the moment we're serving uh, 17 like uh, either dishes or bites. So this is made from a nori pancake and then just into that we have a cream of yeast and then also an egg yolk cream. Just on top to fill the tart we've got mountain trout. So this we've actually been aging now for one week. Uh, so we just brine it first and then hang it. And uh, so then we've served it with some of the roe and you have pickled nori on top as well. Just again one text in one bite. Thank you. So we have the crustade which has been made with beer and also whey from the cheese near. And then we uh, just fill this with langoustine claw which we've lightly steamed. And we bound this with an emulsion made from the roasted heads. And then on top of that we have pickled fennel with cabbage flowers as well. So we worked together at Mimo and the, when this project came up it was uh, straight away. It was like I have to talk to Jeff about it. Because for me, I always like love the way he is with guests and love like his uh, passion for his style of wine. And, uh, and then we also have this guy Tony, uh, so he's making all of the juices as well. Tony and Jeff together they worked at Under, so when we approached Jeff, Jeff uh, straight away approached Tony as well. from Philippe Tessier and a little forgotten about part of uh, Loire Valley, uh, Cours Chevigny, where you'll find the grape Romaranta and also some Menu Pinot. Quite a rich and ripe style of uh, pet nut to assist with this uh, lovely creamy texture and still with this uh, aromatic nose there as well. Juice is actually almond milk, homemade along with some dried raspberry leaf. Coming to the end of the last white asparagus from Norway, we just braise this in the whey from the cheese near. And then on top of that you'll find a little bit of caviar from Gastronica. And then finally is a sauce, a uh, cream made from the uh, preserved white asparagus within the whey as well. Finally you have the ground ivy on top, so you just want to go right into the bottom to get all the layers together. One 
one that actually we didn't know uh, the Norwegians would love it so much and we have like celeriac juice and mussels and then it's just seasoned with a little bit of uh, curry powder as well so we just have this one at the moment with scallops and a curry uh, leaf oil but uh, then all the Norwegians after tell me that this uh, reminds them of like when they were younger eating the uh, fiskebolla with the curry sauce but I didn't even know it just happened Fiskebolla make curry so now we have for you our bread serving. So then also the beer that goes into the bread. So this is uh, one of my favourites. So it's a old speckled hen, which is an English red ale. So we just reduced that right down and made very much like a milk syrup, uh, what you would have, or treacle, what we would call in England. We've added that into a rye brioche just on the side, it's sweet meat sub butter. Yeah, at the minute actually we have uh, the langoustines from Froya and so we're just cooking this in salted butter and, um, and then we have this with a uh, roasted cabbage and lamb broth with uh, just a bit of beef fat at the end and then we picked some Jack by the Hedge from around town and uh, just blanched, made, made a puree of that it's seasoned with pickled horseradish as well it reminds me of a cheeseburger. I think it's the garum. It's uh, super like beefy, salty, like umami. Really good. Like barbecue. So this one here is the duck. So this is from Holtegaard. So you just aged the duck on the crown for one week. At the very bottom, you have cream of onion along with black garlic. Then here's a sauce made from nettles and duck bones and then we just added in some butter as well. Just on top you have the leaf. This is made from caramelized onions and ramson. Uh, now we have the liver. Uh, so we just made a parfait and then also whipped the liver. And then this is just alongside some pickled lingonberry on top of the potato nest with chickweed on the top. You just want to take this in one bite. Thank you. So now we have a little pre-dessert, so this one here is a licorice milk sorbet. So you have a puddle there of last year's blueberries, so just preserve these with salt to collect all of the juice. And now we've added the tarragon oil, and just this morning, myself and Tom, uh, we went out and picked some ants from Big Toy. I love tea, like days off, like 10 cups of tea. I love it and it's like makes me so happy just have a cup of tea you know and it's also quite funny because in the UK you have loads of bad places called like you know, someone's tea room or whatever so it's like a nice way to try and uh, make that good again. So we do this more Asian style of brew uh, so it's quite a high dosage of the loose leaf. Uh, here we're using Guranza, uh, this is a Nepalese basically wild uh, black tea grown at high altitude and uh, this is also the first flush. So as you can see hardly any time uh, that you allow it to steep uh, really uh, almost to have this soft expression with a lot more of the stone fruit touch of this hay kind of character there as well. So uh, just to go with your tea now, we have a little slice of custard tart. So we have the custard in the middle, it's been infused with sweet wood rough. And then just on top there you have last year's strawberries. Just preserve this with champagne and also Earl Grey tea and lemon tart. Now we have for you your final bites. So we have a few pedicles to go with the coffee. So I'll start off with this one here. This is a sour gum. This one has been made from pickled beetroot and also rose. And then we also have an ice cream sandwich of rhubarb custard. So we have a rhubarb custard parfait with ginger parkin on the outside. And then we have the elderflower from this week. Uh, so you have a little fritter made from elderflower cordial at the bottom. And we also have a custard and pickled elderflower. It's just been seasoned with uh, Chinese spice spice. And then finally is a canale from uh, pine and rum. So you have the young little spruce just on top pickled as well.